Hello, everyone. Um, today, I want to walk you through um, a little bit of a behind the scenes of the Foundation Delegation Program. Um, the main objective is to share with every one of you who applied um, our thought process on the Foundation Delegation Program, uh, the objectives, um, and uh, basically see how it all works and then give a bit of transparency. Um, also, to then invite you to share your feedback um, so that we can um improve this uh this delegation program in uh the further iterations of this uh, of this program um so i'll start with a small intro uh i'll cover the objectives some of the criteria i'll go through some of the applications in, in a bit more detail uh and then i'll i'll cover quickly like what's what's next and what we can look at to to not miss out on uh, on round two um, so first of all, um, as, as a, I mean, quick reminder, so the, the vision of persistence uh, and persistence chain is pretty clear. Uh, it is that we want to become a, a liquid staking hub uh, and basically provide um, a chain that um, enables projects to come, come in and build uh, liquid staking applications um, or anything around liquid staking, basically, on top of the chain. Um, and uh, currently we have, uh, of course, we have the P-Stake uh, application, uh, which just went live with, with SDK Atom uh, issued on the persistence chain. Um, but there are also a few other projects uh, who started building and who are going live soon. One of them uh, is Dexter. So it's a, um, a decentralized exchange uh, focused on liquid stake assets. And then there was recently announced a project called Bamboo, um, which is um, basically focused on uh, money markets. Um, again, focused around liquid stake, uh, liquid staked assets. Um, now, what does that mean? Like now that more and more projects and developers start to come build on top of the chain, um, we do want to make the chain uh, a lot more robust. We want to make it a lot more developer friendly. Uh, we want to make it more decentralized, um, and so on and so on. Um, so we uh, basically put in place um, a foundation delegation program. Um, which has as objectives to, uh, to truly decentralize uh, decentralize the network, um, also improve the chain, uh, basically to further enhance like the the capabilities within the persistence ecosystem, um, make the chain more robust, uh, make it easier to join as a as a validator, make it easier to join as a developer, um, update all our documentation, make sure that we're one of the the best in class when it comes to documentation so that onboarding of users or of developers becomes super easy um make sure that there are a lot of like additional services provided for um for the chain support uh, and basically the the role of the foundation delegation program is to incentivize all these contributions that that help to um, help persistence uh, core one chain to become a better a uh, better chain within the the cosmos ecosystem um one other objective was um or is basically to create a more thriving testnet environment um that's the feedback that we got from some some of the new developers developing on the chain um that they would like a more active testnet um with more of the toolings around it as well so we'll, we'll be working on that and incentivizing contributions towards the testnet um and and in the end basically one of the last objectives, but a very important one to us, um, because we we truly appreciate all the efforts um, and time and effort that basically validators put into securing our chain. Uh, we want to ensure that being an active participant as a validator in the persistence ecosystem um, is economically uh, economically viable. Um, so that's that's one of the the things we definitely want to um, want to cover. Um, so I briefly went through the objectives, um, sharing my screen actually. Um, the first round um, is uh, basically completed um, and uh, delegations have been uh, been made. Um, basically, um, I'll quickly go through the, uh, the criteria again. So basically we split up the criteria uh, and delegations uh, depending on a few, a few different things. So first of all is just meeting the baseline criteria of being a validator and um, it's basically set out here um, that you need to be active at all times uh, or in the active set at all times uh, voting power needs to be um, below two and a half percent to be eligible for a delegation commission below or at five percent um, with the self stake at a uh, thousand xprt minimum um, solid up times of 95 percent or more uh, ideally more of course 
and continuous governance participation. Uh, and we started count counting from uh, proposal 11. Um, of course, um, we don't want uh, validators to get slashed. So we excluded validators who got slashed uh, more recently. Um, and there was the, the requirement of getting um, getting the form in on, on time. Um, one thing I want to note, like I got a few questions around the self-stake uh, recently, like why we do that. I mean, um, it's multiple reasons, but I think the main important uh, reason is that we want uh, each of our validators to show at least a little bit of skin in the game um, in order to be eligible for, uh, for a delegation. Um, also towards, um, I think delegators is quite important to show that you also have something at stake. Um, and that's why we have that, that thousand XPRT as a minimum. Um, now, um, <clears throat> from the applications uh, that we received, I think we received 65 something applications. Um, most people meet the baseline delegation, but there are a few who, uh, who didn't. Um, and um, I think one of the most common ones is the, the soft slashing uh, that has happened. Uh, there's quite a few who applied who didn't meet the criteria of uh, not getting slashed in the last six months, uh, mostly soft slashed for downtime. Um, but that's one thing to uh, to definitely avoid um, and um, yeah, make sure that doesn't happen anymore going forward in case you want to uh, apply for the uh, delegation program. Um, Moving on, I uh, wanted to uh, oh yeah, go back actually to um, to this. So after the baseline criteria, um, there were a bunch of bonus uh, bonus criteria. Um, basically, you have to be eligible for the baseline in order to receive any bonus. So you can actually commit uh, a lot of um, things for mainnet, testnet, um, a lot of contributions. Uh, but if you don't meet the baseline criteria, you won't get the bonus um, delegation either. Um, so you need to meet both uh, in order to get the, the bonus. Um, so how we split that up, the bonus is uh, we separated um, mainnet contributions from testnet contributions, um, from community com contributions, and also some other contributions. Um, the form was set up in a way that um, it basically forced, forced the answers to be sorted um, in those uh, categories as well which made it a bit easier for us to, uh, to process um, afterwards. Um, but what I'll quickly show here is um, like how exactly we looked at these things and uh, how we attributed uh, the delegations based on uh, the baseline and on the, uh, on the bonus criteria. So to start off, um, we, uh, we basically set some, um, set some parameters for ourselves, like uh, we have an amount of, um, of stake we wanted to, uh, to delegate. And we did. We wanted to distribute that um, in a way that is relevant for us, and that we think um, the uh, help drives. I mean, makes the persistence chain drive and uh, grow the ecosystem, make it more robust in a way that that we think is needed at this time. Note that for the second round, uh, these distributions might be completely different, um, depending on on what we think is a priority at at that at that stage. Um, so, if you look at uh, total distribution. Um, we put a lot of um, importance, especially in round one, towards the baseline. Uh, so 55% of all the stake that we delegated uh, went to uh, to validators who just meet the baseline. Um, and then 20% uh, went to uh, contributions on mainnet, so that those are additional contributions. 10% went to testnet contributions, 10% to um, community contributions, and then we had 5% for uh, other contributions. Then. Um, we distributed this even further. Um, so let's say we had 100 XPRT um, um, to delegate. Um, then, of course, the 55% is quite straightforward. That's divided evenly amongst everyone who, uh, who met the uh, baseline criteria. Um, but then the 20% the um, that is left uh, was, again, um, was again delegated um, in a way or distributed in a way uh, that we think uh, makes most sense for the network at this stage. Um, one important point is um, endpoints um, that we uh, we need uh, for people to uh, more easily connect uh, to the chain. So RPC, gRPC, uh, things like that. Um, so endpoints uh, providers uh, receive 28% of that 20%. Um, relayers, um, we want to be very well connected to a lot of other um, Cosmos chains out there. So uh, running IBC relayers is quite important. Um, 
with the launch of SDK Atom, ICA relayers uh, become uh, quite important as well, basically setting the configs on your IBC relayer to uh, enable ICA transactions as well. Um, and then other um, things were divided, like providing snapshots um, was, was worth 10% of the mainnet uh, distribution. Um, we have explorers uh, providing wallets, subgraphs, uh, all of these numbers uh, you can have a look at. I think we'll publish these as well. Um, on the test net, um, we divided or we distributed 70% of the 10% uh, um, of the test net uh, just for being active on the test net uh, in the first phase uh, of bringing the test net truly to life. Um, we put a lot of effort uh, or we basically put a lot of importance on just being there as a test net validator and being active. So that's the first one. Um, and then um, we uh, put out percentages for uh, endpoints again for test nets, uh, providing an explorer for test nets, relayers on test net, faucets, uh, things like that. Um, but in round two, expect this to to change quite a bit. Um, I guess the the current um, test net validators will have received a nice nice amount of stake for being being there uh, in this round. Uh, but of course, I think there's a lot of work to do on our testnet to to truly make it very relevant. Um, so this one will probably um, have quite a bit of changes in the next round and move more towards uh, a mainnet distribution at some point. Um, but uh, for now, this is uh, what we did. On the community side, um, a lot of um, our attention goes to educational content, marketing and events, uh, managing regional communities um, and um, community moderation. Um, and a bit on, on translations as well. And then on other, um, a lot of it goes to uh, documentation and support, um, like 50% in total documentation directly through GitHub or, or Gitbook, basically. Um, I mean, I guess mainly GitHub for, for you guys. Um, and validator support in Discord, uh, through documentation, uh, through other ways, like when, when there's a, a chain halt or an emergency or whatever. The activeness in Discord, um, we we truly appreciate that. So put a lot of um, a stake to, towards that. Um, then other tools, um, specifically um, something to support P stakes. So the ecosystem projects uh, might have uh, specific support for for the other projects that launch as well. Um, again, documentation um, that is uh, more um, elsewhere. So not only on our GitHub, but also like on your GitHub, for example or on a blog or whatever, um, things like that, research reports, partnership referrals, and then some other things we couldn't really uh, qualify. So that's how we distributed um, our, um, our delegations. Um, and um, how, how do we look now at this? I think it's probably one of the, the questions you have. Um, so basically what we did is like we received all these uh, responses, uh, 60 something if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And one by one, we looked at them and basically structured them in a very uh, detailed manner uh, where every single uh, contribution basically was listed. Um, and um, I mean, this is just like now a few examples. I can scroll through this, but it doesn't really uh, make much of a difference. But basically, we, we add all the uh, contributions, put it in the right category, uh, verify, of course, whether it's a valid contribution or not by checking the address, uh, checking the URLs, checking whether it's active uh, and so on. And uh, we basically gave a score. Um, I, I blanked out uh, the, the details here, but basically reviewed this internally uh, and gave a score on like how valid or how valuable this contribution is to us. Um, and based on, on that and the uh, parameters that we set, um, that we set here, um, we basically were able to calculate um, the specific delegation that we were, uh, we were giving to everyone. Um, so I guess um, that's kind of uh, just to show you like what what type of effort um, went into this. Um, I'll stop presenting now, um, but basically wanted to uh, show that to everyone that uh, that this is not something that has um, has been done like uh, very uh, randomly or based on some like feelings or connection or like how well we we know certain people. Um, Everything is like very, very well thought through, um, and uh, put a lot of effort into uh, making these um, making these uh, delegations um, in a way that that makes sense. Also, because we appreciate truly the the effort that you guys put in into um, making our chain run securely. Um, 
So there will probably be a few changes for, for round two, um, but basically I want to open it up um, to, um, to you guys and then allow uh, feedback to come in uh, in the next couple of, of days and weeks um, to see like, what do you guys think of this? Um, what do you think we can do, uh, what we can do better? Uh, what should be a bigger focus uh, in terms of, of um, distribution, for example, um, in order to, uh, to truly make the, the vision of persistence come true? Um, and um, yeah, I think that's, um, that's mostly, um, mostly it. I mean, we know it's definitely not um, not perfect um, at this stage. Um, I mean, it's definitely far from perfect, but it's a first uh, first attempt, uh, and we truly hope to get your uh, your feedback on um, yeah on this entire program and see how we can make this better uh, together. Um, I think for uh, for round two, like a few maybe tips to definitely not miss out on round two. I think first one is. Make sure to monitor the the Discord channel itself, uh, the validator announcements, um, to mi not miss at least that um, that there is a, a round two going on. Um, watch your documentation from time to time. So uh, based on these uh, contributions and all the responses that we've received, um, we've updated the, the docs.persistence.one. Um, so all the all the relayers, for example, have now been listed. Uh, all the the snapshots, um, all the RPCs, uh, it's all been been listed now and available. Um, so have a look at the documentation, see if everything that you provide is um, is available there. And if it's not, um, it might have been uh, missing in your uh, application. Um, some things were also, I mean, do not merit to be on the documentation page. Uh, but yeah, don't don't fear that those have also been taken into account. Um, but yeah, realistically um, speaking, the the docs and all contributions that are um, like truly uh, important, especially like on the mainnet side and testnet side of things, um, maybe less relevant for the community side of contributions. Um, but ideally, they are all listed on the docs website as well. So docs.persistence.one. Um, have a look there. Contribute there as well. You can just raise uh, PRs there directly um, to to merge things. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll provide a feedback form um, for you to uh, fill in, and um, yeah, to get a work on on round two and uh, the yeah, continued uh, the objective to to truly like further decentralize the network and improve the network at the, at the same time. Um, so if there's any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know where to reach us. Uh, we can have a discussion in the validators chat in um, in Discord and. Um, yeah, looking forward to your responses. Thank you so much.